Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to BPTV. I'm your host, DJ Mikey Moran, bringing you behind the scenes and behind the music. Today we are interviewing a world-renowned music producer and DJ from Amsterdam, who recently had a show here in Bali at Sky Garden. He has played at the biggest festivals in the world, such as Tomorrowland, Ultra Music Festival, and big clubs like Hakkasan, Las Vegas, and many more. Uh, not only does he have an impressive DJ career, he has also produced many hits and worked with the biggest artists such as Wyclef John, Tiesto, Major Lazer, Martin Garrix, and um, they have all received hundreds and hundreds of plays. So without further ado, I present to you DJ Moti. What's up? What's up, man? Thank you for coming in and doing this interview. Yeah, um, so let's talk about your DJ for uh, career first. Like, how did you start? What were the influences? Like, what made you become a DJ and a producer? Um, well, I used to go out a lot, like when I was younger. Um, I was working in a in a clothing store, and at some point, uh, one of my colleagues sold his turntables. Back then, still, still turntables. And I thought, yeah, why not? Why not buy them from buy buy them from him? Because mm -hmm. I was going out so much. So from that moment on, I was in the record store every Friday, going to records, and you know, uh, DJing uh, with my face against the wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, that's actually how I started too. I like right when I was getting out of college, someone was yeah. selling some used turntables, and I said, why not? You know. Um, so you've been playing at festivals all around the world. What was the turning point in your career where? you went from that to like, holy snap, I'm DJing in like big, big festivals. Um, well, I actually had two careers, so, or this is my second career. So the first one I uh, DJed together with my cousin, where our name was Groove Fanatics. It was more like, you know, we released on Defecta, Strictly Rhythm, those kind of labels, more housey. Um, back then I was just traveling Europe and mostly just the Netherlands, uh, which was pretty good. And after four or five years, uh, we separated and I started Moti. And um, when I started Moti, like, the first track I released was together with Quintino on Afrojack's label and yeah, yeah. Uh, Tiesto put a track on one of his uh, CDs. So from that point on he, he started following me on Twitter and I was like, oh my god, Tiesto's following me, what is this? So <laughs> I sent him a DM and he sent me a message back, uh, send me more music. So, so we started talking, uh, you know, changing our music and from that came the first collab. Mm -hmm. And I think we had contact for about six months to a year and he was like, dude, I'm starting a new management uh, company. Do you want to join and do you want to sign? And I'm like, wow. oh my God, this is amazing. And this was, you know, this, uh, I think it was 2013. And um, that year he did a big show together with Calvin Harris mm -hmm. uh, in the Ziggo Dome. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it was Heineken Star Club. And uh, he asked me, so uh, Calvin is playing, then, am I, then I'm playing. So do you want to play after us? I'm like, oh my God. And that's, that was my big first big show because it was 15,000 people. So yeah, it was, wow. Yeah, it was huge. So from that point on, it was like, you know, everything just yeah, yeah, up yeah. so fast. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, dude, what, the, the thing with DJs, it just like, there are these like big kind of like shift in moments where you don't really anticipate it and all of a sudden you're playing in front of 15,000 people. Yeah. It's just like from zero to hero, man. You yeah, know but I mean? this was exactly what happened. Like. Uh, I remember the day like it was yesterday, you know, because I was so, so, so scared to go on stage. <laughs> not scared, but nervous, you know? No, we, I mean, it, we have our stage rights, yeah, man, you know? I, mean, I have been playing for, for years, you know, and, I, and I, di I did, I've done a lot of big shows, but not after Calvin Harris and Tiesto <laughs> and in my hometown, Amsterdam, <laughs> with, with everyone from the industry coming, because it was ADE and yeah, Tiesto yeah. and Calvin never do a show. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew everyone who was going to be there are important people, and my name was nothing back then, yeah, and, yeah. you know, so... So everyone was like, "Who's this guy playing after Tiesto?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was it was very very nerve wracking at uh, at the beginning, but once I got on stage and you know Tiesto gave me a proper introduction, like the last record he played, he played a record of us together. So you know he he he, he turned down the cut off a little bit and he introduced me and like he's gonna take over oh, now. Oh wow, know? man! So and that's, you know that's amazing. Once I played my first song, I knew like okay, this is this is what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, it's amazing yeah. because all the nerves just you know uh, how I felt it just turned into positive. Yeah, yeah, positivity, yeah. you know. So that was a, a good show. I think I saw you play the first time. You did a, a show in Sampurna Strategic in Jakarta. Did you remember that gig? Um, you, I'm not you, sure. You, you did a Jakarta gig in like outdoor, like a while back. You. Like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? That was the Smirnoff event. So yeah. I mean, that was like years ago, and you've come yeah. to Indonesia a few times. How do you feel? the music is seen right now? Do you feel it's moving forward? Like, how does it, let's say, compare to like Europe? Like, how do you feel about um, it? I'm not sure. It, like, 
I feel like Europe is more. Um, I feel like people are here more, more jumping and doing, going crazy and stuff. And mm -hmm. you know, in Europe, it came back. Like it's, it's kind of weird because in the beginning, Europe was was kind of slow. Like everyone comes to the party, every, yeah. and afterwards, everyone's like, okay, oh my god, it was amazing. I get all these DMs, but from the crowd, they didn't get the same energy. Mm -hmm. um, and once I came to Asia for the first few times, you know, it was so, it was so much energy. And now Europe, you know, the new generation in Europe yeah, is shifting. also like this. So now, now it's now I feel like everywhere in the world is pretty much the same, and the energy is high. And then, mm -hmm. you know, you have specific people who know they want to listen to your music, and they come to see your music, and you know, they go crazy. Yeah. yeah. So I feel like there's not that much big of a difference anymore, except for that there the weather is way better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. True. 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 Yeah. So, um, you know, you've been working with great artists such as like Wyclef John, yeah. Tiesto, I think, um, you know, like a few others. And um, what was it like to work with these artists and like how has like that shaped you as a DJ and a producer and stuff like that, you know, because um, you're working with established artists. I'm sure there's musical influences and stuff like well, that. Well, I know? think it's always important to experiment and mm -hmm. um, that's why I get to work with all these people because all the tracks are in different genres. Yeah, and yeah. You know, they're, they're so far apart. And then I think the most important thing to, to uh, evolve yourself as a producer and get better is just to experiment, you know? Yeah. And that's, that's, you know, from everyone I've worked with, you know, everyone works in a different way. So I learned from everyone, I learned different stuff, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like, like, uh, Tiesto is really good in think, uh, thinking st strategi uh, strategic, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Martin Garrix is really good in thinking melodies. Yeah. Uh, Diplo is with Major Lazer is really good at, uh, um, uh, making more the Moombaton, reggaeton kind, kind of side, you know, mm -hmm, it's, mm -hmm. it's, everyone has their own, has their yeah. own, uh, stuff. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. you know, I just try to learn from everyone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 No no doubt no doubt I mean it's all about actually I feel as a DJ and a producer for musical experimentation and also musical education you know what yeah. I mean? if not you don't want to be sounding like the rest of yeah. everyone yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? yeah. um, and what can we expect with you for, for from productions like what are you working on right now um, well I've got a track with rehab coming up mm -hmm. uh, in October um, I have uh, 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 a track with Vigiland uh, who are the guys from Sweden uh, also in October coming up, I'm working on a track with Icona Pop, which is pretty big. Okay. Um, yeah, like I think in the next few four months, I have like six releases coming up, so it's gonna busy, be busy. Busy. Yeah, busy, it's gonna busy. be a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, with us in Bali Praia, we try to, you know, try. We're, we're a creative music space, trying to inspire people to become DJs and producers. Do you have any advice for people who are starting up, like? Uh, I think like the most important thing is to um, stay, stay creative, be original, um, you know, don't try to follow the trends too much, you know, because if you follow the trends, you, you know, you always, like, I've, I've made this mistake as well, you know, I try to jump on a trend, but at some point you're just listening to other music and trying to, to make something that, that that's in the same direction or, or whatever, and it, I think it's better to experiment and... You know, at some point there's going to be something good, and yeah. it's going to sound different, and that's going that's good that's going to yeah. make the difference in the end. You know, because no if doubt, you're just no going to sound as the rest, you know, it's really hard, especially now because there's so many good so producers. Many. It's you so know many. now the software is, is you know the, the computers are so good that with 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 the cheap software yeah, yeah, you yeah. can make a really good track. So there are so many laptop mm. producers or laptop producers out there. It's just how it is with DJing as well. You know, I mean, I started with vinyl, and then yeah. you know we moved to CDJs, tractors, and all that stuff. Now it's just so easy to become a DJ yeah, so yeah, you yeah. have to somehow be ahead of the game and be creative and experiment and all yeah that yeah well. like the technology helps you out a lot but now yeah. the, the, the you know the difficult part is in getting noticed between all the others yeah. you know and that's that's the difficult part but like how how I got noticed was basically uh, doing a lot of collaborations with, with other artists mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. you know and everyone always tells like yeah but it's difficult to get to them or whatever but really if a track really stands out and you keep sending it and promoing it, people will find you, you know? Yeah. Because like, if I get a good track in my inbox, it doesn't matter what, what name is on it. If yeah, it's a yeah. good track, it's a good track, I wanna yeah. play it because I have something exclusive that no one else has, mm -hmm. you know? So. Awesome. Well, thank you, Moti, for stopping by, yeah, man. Sure, Real you. pleasure, you know. Please, this is a home for artists and musicians, so yeah. please come back anytime. Hopefully we can do a boiler room Bali Praia set over yeah, here, Yeah, that sounds amazing. Like, um, um, uh, I would like to come back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, that's it for now, guys. Um, thank you for watching BPTV. We'll bring you more behind the scenes and behind the music from artists that are stopping by. So check you later. Peace. Peace.